Is Colorado a good place to live? I've been here decades now. My definitive answer is yes, but we're gonna chat about why people are moving in and why people are moving out. Hey everybody, it's Allison Wall with Live South Denver, your real estate strategist and realtor for the South Denver area. From mid-2020 to mid-2021, Denver proper actually lost 6,000 residents on a net basis. In the same time frame, looking in the South Denver area, Douglas County, where I specialize in, we gained 9,000 net residents. Put that into perspective, in 2021, Colorado on the whole grew by 15,000 people, so Douglas County got almost all of them. The year before, all of Colorado had a net population increase of 27,000 people, so we were on the decline from the year before. And in the big perspective, in 2015, Colorado added us some net positive total of nearly 70,000 people. So we have been a little bit on the decline over the last several years. So why the loving and why the leaving? I can confidently tell you several of the reasons people are loving it here. Well, first of all, Colorado's weather, outdoor lifestyle, nature, and beauty is generally the foundation upon which most people are building the rest of their reasons to move here. We all like to tell ourselves we make these big moving decisions logically, but in my experience, these decisions are made in the heart and people love Colorado. And what's not to love about seeing the mountains every day? What's not to love about Colorado's great weather, our lack of humidity, the very minimal amount of bugs and insects we have here? And what's not to love about having a heat index less than your real temperature? You know, 93 degrees outside, but feels like 88. And of course, when you live in Colorado, we live, breathe, eat, sleep. We wake up every day where most of the world dreams of vacationing. We're always moments away from epic skiing, amazing hiking, and generally stunning nature. I'll tell you that what I hear is people come to Colorado to fulfill a dream of a way of life. Now, for most people to do that, you need a job. Not everyone, I do have some folks that that is not required. But for most of us, work is a part of the equation. And Colorado's great job market has been what has sustained such strong population growth in the metro area over the last several years. So Denver's popularity actually gained traction back in the 80s when we declined to host the 1976 Olympics. 60% of Denver residents voted no. They said, no, thank you. We don't want to host the Olympics. While we know that was probably a great choice now because we can look back and see what happens to Olympic infrastructure in cities that have hosted, I don't know that Denver residents got the outcome that they wanted. They didn't want to host. They didn't want all the attention. They didn't want everyone coming here, moving here, changing the vibe of Denver and Colorado. Well, it didn't work. All eyes were on Colorado and Denver, and our population started taking off right in the 80s. Now, back in the 80s, we were still an oil and gas town, which meant our economy rose and fell with the energy industry. Today, Denver is an incredibly diversified job market. Our top job sectors include aerospace, broadcast and telecommunications, healthcare and wellness, financial services, bioscience. We're still big in energy and IT and software. Within that, we have so many tech jobs. We are a huge tech city. Forbes has ranked Denver one of the top 10 job markets in the country. In fact, right now we're ranked number seven. Our unemployment rate hovers in the mid threes. And when it comes to education, Denver is one of the top educated cities across the US. WalletHub takes an algorithm to rank cities, which puts Denver as one of the top 15 most educated cities across the US. And if we look at states and cities with the highest higher education rate, Colorado ranks number two. 42% of our residents have a higher education degree. The US average is just 33%. Massachusetts beats us out as the number one state with 44% of their residents having a higher education degree. If you wanna know more about Denver jobs and the economy, you can check one of these videos out right here. All right, let's talk about Douglas County and that dark blue spot on that map we just looked at a minute ago. Why is it everybody is so hot to move to Douglas County? There are several reasons and the first few tie into the two points we just talked about. 
first, it feels like Colorado here. There are mountain views, bluffs. It feels like Colorado here. When you get here, you're definitely not in an area that's flat and feels like plains. It's like, wait, I'm in Colorado? No, you certainly know you're in Colorado when you're in Douglas County. There are areas that are dense and full of pine trees. There are some that aren't. Well, that's Colorado too. So you definitely have the vibe of you moved to the place that's in the mountains. Also, lots of great access to nature, good mountain biking trails, open space, places to get out and play. We have reservoirs so you can get out and go paddle boarding. It's a county that's full of amenities, rec centers, parks, golf courses. It's known for having a great school system. It's just really rich and dense with outdoor activities, easy access to both retail and fun things to do with family. So it just makes it really attractive to lots of people. Now on the job market front, it attracts highly educated people, which attracts more highly educated people. And it is an easy commute to the Denver Tech Center, really about 20, 25 minutes it's depending on which part of the county you land yourself in. The tech center is very dense for jobs and it's growing and expanding. Then if you are to work in downtown, traffic hour commute time, probably 40, 45 minutes. That's not uncommon for many of the suburbs that have a similar feel to Douglas County and South Denver. And if you're down in Castle Rock, you split the difference between the north side of Colorado Springs and Denver, your commute is probably gonna push more to the 45, maybe 50 minute side of things, depending on where you are in Castle Rock and weather. If there's snow on the road, forget it. Either try not to go in that day or leave extra early. If you're a hybrid worker or a work from home type, your commute into downtown for fun, for events, for that kind of thing is more like 25 minutes. So it makes access for events and date nights super easy. And then you have really everything you need in your suburb and you don't have to leave other than when you're jaunting out to go to the mountains, to go hike, to go play, to travel to the airport, which is really only about 35 minutes away via the straight shot out for 70. The last reason and probably the most significant reason that we're growing so much is the abundant opportunity for new construction. If you've never been to the Denver area and you're just watching online and learning about it, from the edge of Castle Rock to Colorado Springs is a lot of open land and will eventually be developed and fill in. But any open land is prime opportunity for builders. So Douglas County still has quite a bit of open land, which means we're gonna be the place where you can get a new home. Now, we are gonna be farther out from downtown Denver as we continue to move south, but at least you can build, design, have some space, a view, access to trails, all of those great things. Not all the new construction is to the south. There is some new construction in Douglas County that is toward the west. That's where Sterling Ranch is, that's where Solstice is. Parker's in Douglas County, we still have some developments going. So Douglas County has been a ripe hunting ground for new construction, which is why we really have seen so much growth. And on top of that, we have all those perks I just shared. Now, I am always giving updates about new construction. So if that is your cup of tea, you can go check that out right here. Another big player on the stage for Colorado's popularity is politics. I know, a hot topic, right? But it's true. When I'm chatting with people, we always get down to what are your preferences for your community? What is the vibe you're looking for? I can find any of you a three bedroom, two bath house or a four bedroom, four bath house. That's not the hard part. Those exist in every community, right? But we're looking for the magic combination of the community you want, the vibe, the feel, along with the home that you're looking for so that you land in a place where you're really happy. And for some people, part of that is the political bent. They will bring that up and it becomes very important. In fact, every once in a while, one of the first things in an email I will get is I want to be in a community that is more liberal than where I'm from. That is less liberal than where I'm from, more conservative than where I'm from. That is LGBTQ friendly. That does not mandate masks in school. I mean, I get some very specific requests. Now, I will end up just sending some data links and saying, here's some things you might wanna research because I cannot steer people toward one area or another. Colorado has long been heralded as the purple state. And I think that's what is attracting people to share, to come and say, I want something that's less this, that's more this. And I think I can find it here. And in reality, by the time people get settled in, 
and find their community and spend their weekend or their week or their month in their Airbnb or however they're doing their search, which is lots of different ways, they're settled into a community they feel very comfortable in. It's doable. And that has been very, very attractive. It has been a huge part of the draw to Colorado. All right. If that's a small sampling of what makes Colorado so great, what's making enough people leave that our growth was so small last year? Well, let's start with politics. Remember, this is the Wild West. Do it your own way. Don't tell me what to do. Well, as we have had a lot of influx from other states, a younger, more educated population that is bringing in different ideas, and we're seeing folks coming in from states that have generally voted more on the Democratic side of things, we have seen our state vote more that way. That does not always jive well with folks who don't vote that way. I do hear a lot about people leaving Colorado to go live in a state that bends more toward their values, their way of thinking. Just like we have people who come here because it is more in line with their values. Our second downside is congestion. It just has its way of wearing on people. When I moved to South Denver after being in grad school in Fort Collins, Parker didn't even have some of the roads that are now leading to it in existence. Some of the exits off of I-25 weren't even here. Parker Hospital wasn't built. Sky Ridge Hospital wasn't built. The two hospitals in Highlands Ranch weren't built. The hospital in Castle Rock wasn't built. Heck, even parts of Castle Rock into the South End weren't even in existence. The back country in Highlands Ranch was barely a twinkle in anyone's eye. I mean, I've only been here a couple of decades and the growth has been explosive just in the South Denver area. If we take all of the Denver Metro, it's been overwhelming to folks who have been here for a very long time, especially those who want to keep it the way it was. On top of that, there are no new major roads into and out of the mountains. They've barely done any construction on I-70. We do finally have a few sections of toll lanes in and out of the mountains to ease up traffic but they sometimes open them and sometimes don't. So it's not like we can always use those. There's no new roads into Rocky Mountain National Park. We've had to move to timed entry, so you can't just pop in on a whim if someone visits or you get a random day off. There has thankfully been a widening of I-25 and the addition of toll lanes. Even if you hate toll lanes, who wants to pay? It does help save your time if you're stuck running late or just like to watch people sit slowly next to you while you fly by at the speed limit. I will say, if you are gonna leave Denver and go to another big city, it's not like you're gonna avoid congestion there. So we all know that traffic is traffic in any large city. But for some folks, if they're leaving Denver and heading to a smaller town or a quieter place or retiring, they feel like they're gonna get to escape this and go somewhere and experience a different life. So there are some people who are just like hanging it up and checking out to someplace smaller. The other thing is that some people don't like to see the sea of rooftops because we don't have a lot of trees here. So there's something about the perception of congestion too. If you live somewhere so east of the Mississippi where there's a lot of trees and it hides some of the congestion, sometimes that gives you the perception that things are better than they are. That won't happen here. We just don't grow trees that well because of our semi-arid climate. And that congestion piece isn't gonna get better because forecasts are over the next 30 years, we're gonna add 1.8 million people to Colorado. And all this population growth along our sliver of the Front Range brings out the biggest reason people leave Colorado, and that is cost of living. Overall cost of living estimates for Denver range anywhere from 15 to 29% above the national average. And several sources say that our housing prices are about 40% above the national average, unless you look at bestplaces.net, who says that we're a whopping 84% above the national average. If you like to be a city dweller, most every city is gonna be above the national average because we're factoring in those rural areas. But no matter what, Denver is not one of the cheaper cities in the US to call home. That's for sure, we get that, but we're pretty darn beautiful, fantastic, have great weather, we're proud of it. It does even surprise folks from California and the West Coast though. I do see them come here and think they can get every single thing on their wish list within the budget they had set, thinking, oh, if I put down a million two or a million five, where I would have gotten only maybe a 1500 square foot house in California, I can have everything and a view in Colorado. And then they find out that's maybe not so possible here. 
You can get a house with a view at 1.5, but it may not have all the finishes you thought that it would. So there always is a little bit of give and take unless you have an amazing budget. And then let's talk. Is Denver really overpriced though? Is the sticker shock real compared to other cities? Check out this video to see where we rank against other awesome cities with great paying jobs. And if you gotta know more about living in Colorado, this video is for you. And if you wanna chat about Denver, have questions about moving here, please reach out. It would be my pleasure to chat with you. I'd love to connect. And I will see y'all next week.